In this video, I'm going to go over gamma emission as one of the possible types of radiation that can be emitted from an unstable nuclei called a radioisotope, and it can be predicted to be unstable based off of this thing called the band of stability that I have on the back of these set of notes. In a previous video, I went over alpha decay and beta decay, but in this video, I'm specifically just going to focus on gamma emission. If you'd like a copy of these notes, they're in the description below. And what'll happen is it'll force a copy and it's just a one page piece of paper, double-sided, so it printed double-sided. And then what you'll do is to get this to line up, you'll fold it in half down the, kind of down the center here, which will make what's called a hot dog fold. And on the inside then, what you're gonna find is you're gonna have the notes for alpha decay if you watch my alpha decay video and beta decay if you watch the beta decay video. But again, in this video, I want to focus on gamma emission. Now, gamma emission typically accompanies an alpha or beta decay. But in, what I'm going to do is just assume it's just a unique gamma emission reaction or nuclear reaction. They're not very common, but they are possible. So again, the first thing you might want to write down here is that gamma emission many times this accompanies or it's it's a part of so it accompanies accompanies beta or alpha decay so those are the kind of the greek letters oops decay so don't be surprised if in a alpha or beta decay problem you end up with gamma being emitted. Okay, but in this video, I'm going to specifically focus on, well, what if it's just gamma? Because gamma is just zero for a mass number and zero for an atomic number, it means it's basically pure kind of energy. So it doesn't change the mass number. It doesn't change the atomic number. It's just given off in, in uh, excess and has energy kind of extra that has to be released. Okay, so what are the same kind of things that we've did in the other videos? So how far does it travel? Well, it can travel up to 500 meters in air. So it has a much farther distance that it can travel. The tissue depth is also something that's much more extreme. It can go up to 50 centimeters. So this is a much more you know, concerning tissue depth for anything that might be giving off gamma radiation. So again, if an unstable nuclei or a radioisotope gives off gamma, it's a little more concerning, at least on the surface level for your human body. It can be stopped by lead. So I won't put shielded, but it can be stopped or shielded by lead. And in fact, there's usually a thickness of lead um, or what's called thick concrete. So you need a, a fairly thick uh, amount of concrete. Now, you may have to actually, you know, maybe you have to look up the exact thickness of these, but I'm just going to say it has to be pretty sizable. A common example of something that is just gamma emission is the technetium isotope called 99M. And technetium has atomic number 43. So on the periodic table, again, that was something I talked about in the previous videos, it's good to have a periodic table. And technetium is actually an element that is uh, kind of what I call low in atomic number for being unstable. Another one is promethium. But technetium is a much smaller size nuclei, uh, but it is, it is unstable. And that's kind of why it has the parentheses for that uh, it doesn't really have an atomic mass like, you know, ruthenium does. So technetium is commonly used in the medical field. And what happens is this technetium emits emits a gamma emission or emits gamma or a gamma or emits a gamma or gamma radiation. I probably shouldn't even say a emits gamma radiation. And again, maybe right here we'll put what is gamma. Okay. It's the symbol and then zero and zero. And then what else happens is then it just, it stays technetium. It still is 43 and it's still 99, but it loses the M and what the M stands for is something that's metastable. So it means it's kind of stable, but it's going to decay. And it just decays into um, technetium, which we would call, just call 99 to so the 99M. 
All right. So really, if you look at these pictures from before, really the, you know, the nuclei isn't going to change. So if you want to kind of do again, like a, a count, there's 43 protons and then 99, whether it's the M or not, 99 total. So just kind of a review. That's the neutrons plus the protons. So it's 99 neutrons and protons. So if I want to find how many neutrons there are, what I need to do is take the 99 and I need to subtract it from the 43, and I will get 56 for neutrons. So this has 56 neutrons, whether it's the metastable or not. And again, if I add 6 and 3, I get 9. If I add 5 and 4, I get 9. So that's how I got 99 as what's called that mass number. So the good news is with gamma, if it's just gamma, it doesn't change the mass number or atomic number. So it's really easy to write these nuclear reactions because you just add in, okay, well, gamma was emitted. It went from being a metastable cobalt 60 to now just cobalt 60, 27 with this atomic number. So again, the atomic number is 27, so I'd call this cobalt 60, or I would call this cobalt 60 metastable. All right, next is technetium. Same thing, we just did this one. So it's technetium 99, you just lose the M and then 43. And then last but not least, well, what if we, we had to predict what, what did it start out with as a reactant? So again, 38 is the atomic number for strontium and then it, maybe it was 87 and then maybe it was again a metastable. Now, in reality, gamma accompanies, okay? Meaning it's part of the alpha or beta decay. But there are unique times where it really just is a gamma emission. All right. So that covers the three most common types of alpha, beta, and uh, alpha and beta and gamma. I do have kind of plans of making positron bombardment and spontaneous fission and then kind of going over the band of stability, predicting the patterns, talking about radioactive units and calculating half-life. But like I said, to keep this video kind of short and sweet and to the point, we just went over gamma emission. And again, how that really is a unique thing that if it's on its own, it can happen. But realistically, usually it's accompanying um, these other two types of decay. All right, good luck chemists and enjoy your nuclear reaction problems.